So lately my girlfriend has been complaining that I've been spending too much time making videos on the weekend and I don't spend enough time with her. So for this weekend's video, I thought why not kill two birds with one stone? And I did the only logical thing, invited her onto the video. So here's Jess. Oh, hello. Are you excited to be here? Very excited to be here. <laughs> So guys, I thought about mixing it up a bit on this channel and you know, every week we do some review or some comparison of watches. So I thought why not, you know, mix it up and do something different this weekend and maybe even like for future videos, I'll bring on my girlfriend and we will do different kind of videos. So for today's video, we'll be looking at some watches and my girlfriend here would be guessing their price. I'll tell her some things about the watch. We will see if she can guess the right price or at least the ballpark figure. She knows a bit about watches because I keep talking about them non-stop. 24-7. 24-7. Even it? in your sleep probably, yeah. Okay. And she knows some brands of course as well. So do you think you can get most of them right? I hope so. For your sake. Okay. <laughs> 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 we'll also let her uh, rate the watches like okay. from what uh, so each watch after you've given the price whether you get it right or wrong you can give a rate between one to five one being like it's value for money and uh, one being it's no value for money and mm -hmm. five being like it's on the dot and it's value for money okay. not from a watch enthusiast point of view mm -hmm. just from a regular customer who doesn't know that much about watches okay. so let's get into it So the first watch we have here is from a company I'm sure you're aware of, Seiko. Yeah. And um, so this is the Seiko SBB155J1. And this is like a, a, a new watch release this year in August. They mm -hmm. released it, I think. And it comes from the design. The design itself is from a... I, I recently did a video of the Alpinist. I don't know if you watched it. I can't remember. I, 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 mean, I don't know if she watches my videos. <laughs> Uh, it was a Black Dial Seiko watch I recently did. Yes. So that's, that's proper from an Alpinist. Uh, there was a series in Seiko called the Alpinist. Mm -hmm. And they have brought it back. Now they discontinued it in 2018, I think, and they brought it back. Okay. But they put it into their prospects line, which is Seiko's like the highest uh, level. Uh, not going into Grand Seiko. Okay. And, you know, there's other credo, like you wouldn't understand that. But yeah. So for Seiko, that's like the highest level prospects. So they brought the Alpinist style watches back and they put it into this prospects line. So yeah, what do you think about this watch? Like, I like the dial. I remember the, the black one that you did have, mm -hmm. the Seiko. I prefer that. I don't, I don't like the style. You like um, the black dial? I like the black dial. This is a different watch too. Uh, the one that I did on the video, uh, that had an internal rotating bezel, the compass. Okay. So this one doesn't have that. So okay. it's just, this, this one still is uh, 200 meters water resistant. You can see the 20 bar means it's 200 meter water resistant. Okay. I think I don't like the yellow, like uh, letters. The gold. Uh, you are sitting on that green background. Uh, it's not like a prominent gold, I feel. It's like a really like washed out kind of color. Um, but the dial itself, I don't really like. You don't like that? No. Uh, texture going from green to black? No, I no, don't like it. Okay. So I'll tell you some of the specs about this watch. I know some things you understand. Yeah. And so <laughs> you understand the case, like, I mean, it's, it's stainless steel. There's yeah. no gold or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And it, it is 200 meter water resistant. Okay. I think you understand that as mm -hmm. well. And uh, the movement basically is not like the highest level, but it's still 20. It, gains 25 seconds or loses 15 seconds per day. Mm -hmm. So that means like in an automatic watch or even a manual wine watch have some deviations in time, like they, they, they lose time over the day okay. because of it being mechanical. Sure. So this particular movement they are saying, like Seiko says that it will lose 15 seconds or gain 25 seconds per day. Okay. So, I mean, I'm just telling you the specs that you might understand. Sure. You know? yeah. So knowing all that like what do you think the price would be of this watch or in your opinion what what the price should be 
when I first thought about Seiko, I always thought they were sort of the cheaper end on, on the watches. But mm-hmm. you've told me like there's watches out there for like seven, eight, nine grand, which is surprising. That would be Grand Seiko. Okay, sure. Yeah. So, so you've given me a bit of a hint there. Yeah. So it's got to be below this that price, basically. Well, it's up to you to guess. Like. Okay, so I would probably guess around... In Singapore dollars. Maybe around 6K. 6K? 6K. This is Seiko. Yeah. Not Grand Seiko. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> but okay, you said it. You said it. 6K. 6K. You oh, said 6K. Goodness. You're going to tell me like a $200 or something. <laughs> no, it's around a thousand Singapore dollars, oh, which is gosh. like 700 US dollars. Okay. And actually, it's funny that you said 6K or like a higher price mm-hmm. because people are already like complaining that Seiko, Seiko is supposed to be like on the cheaper end and not be, yes. you know, uh, on the Grand Seiko kind of range. More affordable. And so people are already complaining that it's a thousand Singapore dollars. Yeah, and okay. <laughs> so, so you took it like to the next level. <laughs> so yeah, you got that okay. r- wrong, I would say. By quite a bit. Not even, yeah. Just, <laughs> it's like really. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think like it's worth uh, 700 USD or like a thousand Singapore dollars? In terms of value for money, I would probably give it maybe a three. A three? Yeah. Um, even though you you thought it was six thousand dollar watch well if i'm taking it based on the actual price i would say it's a three out of five um but i don't like the watch so i would have ordinarily given it like way on the other end like a minus one but remember we're just rating them on value for money so okay. like, it's not always about whether you, we like it or not but okay. again it's your I'm opinion taking, i'm taking that out okay. of the equation yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's like three out of five, yeah? Three out of five. So, okay, the Seiko gets a three out of five. Mm-hmm. Number two is a G-Shock, which, of course, again, I'm sure you're aware of. So this is from the G-Shock Origins. Um, it's a 5600B-1TR. Of course, like, I mean, this is like the classic G-Shock look. Mm-hmm. And um, the case material is resin with like stainless steel and the band is also resin okay. and it's also 20, 200 meter water resistant mm-hmm. and of course being g-shock it's shock resistant yeah uh, but it is not all of this so it's not like rust resistant doesn't have a solar battery or all of that so it's basically like resin and stainless steel case and a resin band yeah so i think you should be able to guess this like you know I think you do know G-Shock and everybody knows Casio and G-Shock. So. Yeah, I do. So I think a lot of people in that I've seen out in the mall and the shops, like there's always people in the G-Shock shops and they're always wearing a massive G-Shock because you can always see it on their wrists. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's a good like sort of holiday adventure kind of watch too. And it's a Casio, like Casio. who doesn't it's the classic, own a Casio, right? right? Yeah, even I own one. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I would, again, probably more on the cheaper side in terms of watches, mm-hmm. I would give this about $300. In terms of the specs, like nowhere up to like a thousand or mm-hmm. over a thousand, right? Yeah, you're pretty close. It's $279, $280. Nice. So yeah, you got that, right? <laughs> Good. Well done. That'll be one. At least you get a Casio. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, you can finish the video now. I'm doing good. So now that you were close to the price that is listed mm-hmm. what do you think is on one to five like for value for money like how much would you rate it five out of five. Oh yeah why yeah. is that like it's worth it i mean three hundred dollars is for me that feels like really cheap compared to the prices of what that what you look at and we travel a whole lot yeah. so i can imagine that being a watch that you bring all the time you know yeah so yeah definitely five, five out of five, five. Oh. now let's move on to a brand that was my first watch like i mean my first brand that i bought a real uh, watch Mm -hmm. proper watch and you were there with me you know when i bought the planet oceans omega yeah i picked up a seamaster which is uh james bond edition okay so 007 uh it was it is actually featured in the new movie that Mm -hmm. is gonna come out when it comes out (laughs) whenever it comes out yes it was gonna come out in november and now probably april next year april but who knows maybe it will not be coming out in april as well like I mean, nobody knows yeah so i love this watch mm-hmm. like i know it uses so this is something we call faux patina okay. so the loom that you see is uh, not it gives the look that it has aged mm-hmm. but it's not really it's just faux sure. like the patina is just faux mm-hmm. and um, so yeah i mean i love this watch this is a full titanium watch okay um a 42 millimeter 
and it's 300 meters water resistant so it could it is a basically a dive watch okay. and you see the bezel this you have this bezel dive watch you know with my rolex that dive watches have yes 60 minute markers so you set it to the minute yeah. hand and then it can when you're diving it can tell you you know how much air you got left yes. basically oxygen <laughs> you got left full titanium watch with the titanium uh, mesh bracelet yeah I love the bracelet you like the bracelet mm -hmm. yeah very nice um, so yeah I mean he'll be wearing this in the in the movie as mm -hmm. well and he actually Daniel Craig has worked with Omega on the design itself oh, wow, okay. so he was uh, I don't know how much he was involved yeah. but he was involved in the design itself okay now that you've seen the watch you know the specs a bit and you know the importance with the you know being Omega being involved with the 007 since I think the 90s okay so what do you think like the price of this watch should be probably quite pricey mm -hmm. I think a lot of 007 fans would like buy this in a heartbeat just because of the kind of associated brand mm -hmm. are you um, a 007 fan i am who's your favorite like bond <laughs> james um, bond james bond um i would say daniel craig oh okay so the new guy on the block okay. Not, i mean some of the old school guys are cool Pierce Brosnan. yeah some of them are cool but i, I like uh, daniel craig yeah. Okay. So awesome. again, back to the watch. Sorry. So how, uh, okay. It's Just fine. Imagine James Bond can be on the beach. Oh, okay. Okay. Not me. Just imagine him wearing it. You Not know, me. On the beach. Not me. <laughs> and you, of course. Oh, okay. So, what do you think the price is? Probably quite pricey. I would say twelve k. Twelve k. Singapore yeah. dollars. Singapore dollars. Okay. So you're not far off actually okay. the suggested price is 13450 okay so i can imagine fun. i can imagine just so knowing what, what would you rate this one between 1 to 5 because of the one. brand i think it's sort of an acceptable amount of money to pay um and even though titanium is a superior material a lot of people actually do prefer stainless steel because okay. it has that a little bit of a weight sure. like i don't like heavy watches but i want just a little bit of weight on my watch you uh, want to so, know what's on your wrist yeah so yeah. even though i understand the titanium watch is very comfortable to wear and stuff mm -hmm. um, i mean i don't know so according to you like what do you think is it i would say a four out of five four i mean five. it's pricey for an average person i'm not sure if, you know if they really love 007 in terms of value for money so i would give it a four out of five okay so um i quite like it so, yeah, a, i it's think because it's 007 that's what i'm kind of a bit biased um, Four out of seven is, I think, good stuff. It's pretty good, yeah. But it's a nice watch. Like, I'm actually attracted straight away by the bracelet. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. So the next brand is something that women, of course, will be very familiar with. And because of their jewelry as well. Mm -hmm. But they are very well known for their watches as well, uh, also. Okay. And this one we have here is the Cartier Tang Solo. So this is a ladies watch by the way and this is a 18 karat rose gold mm -hmm. but it is a quartz watch so a lot of the brands do make quartz watches for ladies because they always feel that um, women women don't, care. women don't not, not just that it's also that women don't want to be setting time or caring about winding sure. uh, watches mm -hmm. which i don't think is true i mean we have a lot of people like if you look into you know the watch community women in into watches like we have um, the 10 and 2 there's this a podcast 10 and 2 we have amazing podcast they have done like over 100 episodes now we have a lot of uh, instagram accounts that are run by like women who are into watches mm -hmm. so i think they also do not like quartz watches look wise i think the tank is like one of the most iconic um, watches mm -hmm. basically it's based on the design of a tank yeah so i mean first of all like do you like the look of that watch or i like some cartier watches i mean i know it's a cartier watch straight away okay um just by uh the design of it and then the uh the number the number format that they use the roman you mean the way it's extended out like yes that. um so it's i mean it's a memorable watch mm -hmm. i know that cartier is very expensive okay but it being a quartz watch, you would automatically think it's lower end, but 
I've heard you screaming and shouting about watches that are quartz, so they're very, ex you know, and they and they price, you know, you hear their price first. I mean, I did a video on the quartz. FP John, which was fifteen grand. But I mean, some watches, some watches with quartz do deserve that price. Tag. Sure. But yeah, so what do you think this price should or is uh, retailing for? Seventeen k. Seventeen thousand Singapore dollars. Yeah, because they're crazy. <laughs> Thirteen okay. maybe. Uh, you I changed your mind. Okay, 13. 13. You're still off. Am You're I? still off. Yeah. Oh, goodness. It's actually 6,800 Singapore dollars. <laughs> That's cheap. It's not cheap. It's, it, it feels very cheap, actually. From Would you buy something like this? A quartz watch. I know you have, uh, she has a, a Rado, which is, she wanted, I, I really wanted her to buy a mechanical watch, but she insisted that she needed diamonds and gold. Uh, because I care for something that looks beautiful. Visual, okay. I don't care what's happening behind. I mean, <laughs> you do. It's, it's a big crisis for you. <laughs> okay, so would you buy something like this? A gold quartz watch for 6,800? And of course, like you can rate again. You I would... wouldn't buy this watch for 7K because but you thought it was 13k so isn't that better like it is much cheaper yeah but i wouldn't have bought it anyway because but do you think it's value for money if a person is into this brand then 7k is not that that bad okay so i would give it a i give it a three out of a five three out of five, five. Yeah. even though it's quartz even though it's quartz i mean we've seen that that doesn't matter for some brands Okay. I think the brand carries the watch. I think people, they, like you say, it's aimed to, like, women will buy the watches. Mm -hmm. And maybe 7K is actually within their budget. Yeah, actually, I agree with you on the 3 out of 5 on for value for money. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. So the next brand is actually a very controversial brand. And you must have heard from me a lot of, you know, bad things I've said about this brand. Okay. But, I mean, I, I do like some of their... Um, designs and mm -hmm. what they're doing with different materials it's richard mill by the way Ooh. so <laughs> why you know how i feel about this brand how do you feel <laughs> it's like i feel like everything i feel about a certain brand is what you feel no i've got my own opinion about it for sure okay i think i'm just so angry at how expensive they are or is it because you can't afford them no i would never <laughs> buy this i would never buy it Okay, yeah. so but the, the watch I'm showing to you today is actually the RM6702 and this was, they have different, uh, for different athletes mm -hmm. and this, the one I'm showing you today is for uh, an athlete from South Africa, so mm -hmm. the country you come from. Yes. It was made for an athlete called uh, Wad, I think you should pronounce this. Wad van Nierkirk. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm saying it right. That's your country. Like, I, you know, know but, I know, but some names are really like funny. Okay, so like this is the watch we're looking at today. Okay. Um, you can see straight away it's from a South African related. It has a South African flag on it. Well, it's got all the colors and our green and yellow is very prominent. I know it's going to be expensive. Like, it's just trying to guess on the money what it's gonna be so so before you guess like mm -hmm. what you need to know of course it's a skeleton watch like most i think all of richard mills watch and automatic it's and they work with very like exotic materials mm -hmm. like for their case and i feel even though i don't think that the price uh, prices are justified but what they do with different kind of materials is like very groundbreaking and a lot of their watches have a very shock like you must have seen recently in uh, Roland Garros, the, uh, when Nadal won, and he had the watch, uh, the new R Richard Mille uh, watch on his hand. It's like a million dollar watch, yeah. and he was wearing it while he played for the whole, the, the, played the whole tournament, and basically it can survive that kind of a shock, like a, okay. from a tennis racket. Yeah. So you can understand like how. How much force it can do. Yeah, it's like overly engineered watches, okay. like you know these watches. Uh, actually, I quite liked this particular green one. The only problem for me is the strap. So this is basically just a, an elastic strap that, okay. that's on this watch. So okay. that's so what you cheap. get. Uh, well, well, I mean, it's cheap, but doesn't, doesn't um, it, suit the main watch. It just doesn't justify the price too. I mean, okay. I've not told you the price, but it doesn't justify the price. It's very uh, thin watch. I like thin watches. Um, this is the back of it. Okay, so you can see the movement. Yeah, uh, it's a skeleton watch. Sure. So a skeleton watch you can see through. Everything, yeah. Yeah, so 
knowing all the materials they use and you know the, the Richard Mille, how overly priced they are. Mm -hmm. What do you think the price of this watch is? So you mentioned Nadal having a million dollar watch. But that's a very different uh, class of watch. Yeah. Also, he's a much higher athlete. This is just an athlete from South Africa um, and he's into athletics. So I think it will be on the lower end on that. Very um, weird way of <laughs> just... I'm just trying to do the formula to try and work out the price. Okay. So not up to a million, obviously. Um, Off to a good start? Over 100k. Ballpark figure, of course. Ballpark, yeah, that's because it's this brand. No, but what? I would say I probably. I'm probably completely wrong. 150 to 170. Like no, actually, maybe 170, probably more. Actually, quite close. It's a uh, 160. 160,000, around 160,000 okay. US dollars. This is US dollars, by the okay. way. So that's maybe. What I meant. <laughs> sure, sure. It's 160. But you can't buy this watch. Just you know, most of Richard, Mille, I think all of Richard Mille watches, they are very limited quantity, and you can't just buy these watches. I think that's why I get so and irritated. I'm well, not irritated, but we've been to a Richard Mille shop. First of all, they pretend you're not even there. I've <laughs> never been. We have been orchard. We have, never. and I've it was hard. It was empty. The place okay. was like. There was hardly anything there, and I think maybe just the first impression didn't get me off to a good start. And ever since then, uh, I think it, it caters to the wealthy. So sure, you're on a, a different level, right? Yeah, so, so us walking in there, maybe we don't look like that. <laughs> no, we don't. You're like, can I put my name on a list? He's like, what list? <laughs> who, who are you? So what, what would you rate for a value of money? Value for money between one to five. Two out of five. Two out of five. Yeah. And what's your reasoning? It's just way out of like the cost is crazy. The yeah. margin, do you think is that charging too much? Is it? I mean, I don't know about that. Like, I don't know how much it's actually costing them to make. But um, I think I'm probably comparing it to other like more amazing watches out there, like your Pateks and things like that. Yeah, definitely. Like for that same price, you can be buying much complicated like you can you can be buying two beyonds by the way she does know what a two beyond is <laughs> you could be buying a two beyond or a perpetual calendar for yeah. the same price and it blows my mind that a simple time only it's not just that it's time only it's just it's just ridiculous for me i feel like this kind of a watch is in somebody's collection that maybe mm. has 10 watches and they want something funky and they also have a lot of cash mm. You know, and this is just like a statement watch for them. It's something exactly. they can buy as an extra. This is definitely like a statement brand itself. Like yeah. if you have this watch, you, it, it, you're making a safe statement. Yeah. And everyone would know it's on your wrist mm -hmm. because you can see it before, you know. Not saying just, that it's only to show off, but. Uh, it's anyway. hard not to see it on someone's yeah. wrist. Yeah. Okay. So two out of five. Yeah. So yeah. Those were the watches. I think you got some right on the dot. Majority right. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I mean, and one of them you gave a five out of five. Mm -hmm. I think it was the G Shock, right? Yeah. yeah. The cheapest one. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was fun. Mm -hmm. So, we have spent enough time for, for this weekend? Yeah, yeah it's been great. Yeah? Thank okay. you. <laughs> Come on, let, me, let, let, me, let me go back to my watches now. <laughs> so, guys, let us know in the comments down below if you enjoyed this video and also if you would like to see her be involved in more videos in the future and maybe we can make a series out of this thing if you enjoyed this video smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel and follow me on instagram at wine on the move until next time cheers bye <laughs> <laughs> cut that out